Okay, so the third pillar of self that I want to speak about is self-respect. And I am really, really bullish on self-respect as a fundamental building block of an overall healthy relationship with self. So this is particularly one that I think, you know, if the self-love stuff doesn't land for you, uh, focus on self-respect. If you want to build self-worth, focus on self-respect. I say this as someone who for many, many years, and I only realized this in hindsight, I had a pretty shocking relationship of self-respect. It was a pretty barren environment in that regard. And, you know, what this looked like for me was I didn't really know what my values were. I didn't really like myself very much. I relied a lot on external validation and wanting to be liked, uh, wanting people to see me in a certain way. And so I just acted in ways and did things that for whatever reason, like gave me some hit of feeling temporarily good about myself, um, but very often left me with this residue of anxiety or discomfort or, you know, just not, not feeling good about you know, how I was acting, who I was being. Um, and I think there was just, there was no internal foundation of knowing who I was or knowing what my values were. And that really easily and reliably led me off track and led me astray. I really suffered as a result of that because I really didn't like myself. <laughs> uh, and I can see now in hindsight how clearly that came from a lack of self-respect. So I believe deeply that building your self-respect is one of the best things that you can do. And you know, arguably, if you take nothing else away from this episode, think about self-respect, think about, you know, do I have self-respect or, you know, if I don't, why not? Like what leads me to feel a lack of self-respect? Um, because I think that that's really deeply important. Um, and it's something that while we may not think about it very much, I think a lot of people, if they were to reflect and introspect on it, they'd probably find that, yeah, that is a missing piece uh, in my relationship with myself is I don't have a lot of self-respect. Um, so, you know, how do we go about building that? I've spoken about this as well before. I think getting really clear on your values and then doing a bit of an audit going, okay, where am I not stacking up? Where am I out of alignment? Um, and trying to close the gap there is a really useful and kind of practical first step. I also think that, you know, challenging yourself. So self-discipline, I think is closely related to self-respect. It's almost like a sub bullet underneath self-respect, you know, following through on the things that you say you're going to do and actually challenging yourself, doing hard things rather than, you know, staying in a very small comfort zone and listening to those stories that tell you that you can't do certain things or that, you know, that's too hard or I'm not that kind of person. Really like, push those stories and go, oh, if that's the kind of person I want to be, then what's stopping me? Uh, and if it's just a matter of you showing up and doing something hard and continuing to show up and you know, maybe being bad at something to begin with, but then getting better, uh, I don't think there's you know, <laughs> many more powerful ways to build self-respect than through self-discipline. So, and again, that's something that has been relatively new to my life. I don't think I've always been self-disciplined, but certainly in the last five years or so, that's something that I've really embraced and that I now see as such a gift to myself rather than, you know, some punishment that I'm imposing upon myself. So learn to embrace hard things, learn to embrace challenge and grow through challenge and discomfort uh, and, you know, self-respect will flow as a natural consequence from that. And I think you'll really um, notice a shift in your overall relationship with yourself.